Ever wondered how hackers exploit bank accounts? Well, today we're going to pull back the curtain on that world. But before we begin, let's make one thing clear. We're here to learn, to understand the vulnerabilities that exist, and to help improve security, not to cause harm. Exploiting a bank account is a process that involves identifying weaknesses in a bank's web application or network infrastructure and using those weaknesses to gain unauthorized access or perform unauthorized actions. This could mean transferring funds, accessing sensitive information, or even taking over an entire system. However, it's crucial to note that these actions are illegal and unethical without explicit permission and are discussed here purely for educational and preventative purposes. So, are you ready to dive into the world of bank exploitation? Remember, all for the sake of learning and improving security. The first step in exploiting a bank account is identifying vulnerabilities. But how can this be done? A great question. Let's break it down. Firstly, we have port scanning. Think of ports like doors into a building. A bank's network will have many ports, some open, some closed. Scanning these ports can reveal potential entry points for an attacker. This is like a burglar checking for unlocked doors. But remember, we're on the right side of the law here. This is about identifying weaknesses so they can be fixed, not exploited. Next, we have web application testing. This involves scrutinizing the bank's web application for weaknesses. We might look for common vulnerabilities like SQL injection, where an attacker could manipulate the site's database, or cross-site scripting, which could allow an attacker to inject malicious scripts. There's also cross-site request forgery, where an attacker tricks a victim into performing actions on their behalf. It's a jungle out there and web application testing is our machete, helping us hack through the undergrowth and spot potential dangers. Finally, we have social engineering. This is where things get a little more James Bond. Social engineering involves manipulating people, rather than technology. This could mean tricking bank employees or customers into revealing sensitive information, or performing actions that could lead to a security breach. It's a reminder that not all vulnerabilities are in code, sometimes they're in people. So there we have it, port scanning, web application testing, and social engineering. Three methods for identifying vulnerabilities in a bank system, but remember with great power comes great responsibility. These techniques should only be used ethically and with permission. Identifying vulnerabilities is the first crucial step, but what happens next? Let's find out. Now that we've identified some potential vulnerabilities, it's time to exploit them. Let's delve into the world of exploitation, where having the right tools and techniques can make all the difference. First off is Metasploit, a renowned penetration testing framework. It's like a Swiss army knife for ethical hackers, equipped with a variety of exploits for known vulnerabilities. Metasploit does the heavy lifting, automating the process and making it easier for you. Say for instance, we've discovered an open port in the bank's network. Metasploit can help us exploit that vulnerability and potentially gain unauthorized access. Next up is Burp Suite, a tool that specializes in testing web applications. If we've identified a vulnerability like SQL injection or cross-site scripting, in the bank's web application, Burp Suite is the tool for the job. It allows us to manipulate the data sent to the server, testing the responses to find weak points and exploit them. Lastly, we have social engineering tools. As the name suggests, these tools are all about manipulation and deception. If we've identified a vulnerability in the human aspect, like an employee susceptible to phishing attacks, we can use these tools to craft convincing emails or create fake login pages. The goal is to trick the target into revealing their login credentials or other sensitive information. These are just a few examples of the tools and techniques available to us. The key is to use them judiciously and ethically always bearing in mind the potential impact of our actions. It's a bit like being a superhero, we have the power to do great things, but we also have the responsibility to use that power wisely. With these tools and techniques, vulnerabilities can be exploited. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. It's not just about finding and exploiting vulnerabilities, it's also about helping to fix them, to make the digital world a safer place for everyone. Exploiting a bank account even for testing and learning purposes, comes with risks. How can we mitigate them? Let's delve into some best practices. First off, we must always secure written permission from the bank. This is not just a formality. It's a crucial step to ensure that our activities are legal and authorized. It serves as our protection and provides the bank with a clear understanding of what will be done. Next, use a test account for your activities. Never, and I repeat, never use a real bank account. Real accounts are tied to real people and real money. 
Using them can lead to serious legal repercussions and ethical dilemmas. Banks typically provide test accounts specifically designed for testing purposes. These accounts are isolated from the bank's main systems, minimizing the risk of unintentional damage. Last but certainly not least, document your findings. This is not a step to be overlooked. It's the cornerstone of ethical hacking. Every vulnerability found, every exploit used should be meticulously recorded. This documentation serves a dual purpose. It's not only a record of your actions, but also a valuable resource for the bank. It helps them understand their system's vulnerabilities, enabling them to fortify their defenses. By following these best practices, we can ensure a safe and ethical hacking experience. That's it for today's deep dive into bank account exploitation. We've journeyed through identifying potential vulnerabilities, exploiting them, and finally mitigating any risks associated. Our exploration has underscored the importance of written permission, using test accounts and documenting findings. It's a dance between creativity, technical prowess, and a deep commitment to ethical conduct. Remember, this information is for educational and security testing purposes only. Always obtain permission before attempting to exploit a bank account. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more hacking tutorials from HackerShield.